In the last lecture, we learned how to validate a template driven form in Angular. Now, in this lecture, let's learn about grouping of form controls. So, here we have this registration form with these fields. Now, if I open Developer Console, let's clear everything from here. And inside this form, let's enter some values. Okay, and let's click on this submit button. So, you will notice that it has logged this ng form object. If I expand this ng form object, this object has this value property. And this value property is nothing but an object which has these properties. And these properties are nothing but the name for these form controls. For example, the name of this first name input element is first name. And with that name, here we have a property. Then this last name input element has a name called last name. And with that name, here we have a property. So this value property is an object which has form control name as its property and value entered for these form controls as the value for that property. Okay, so inside this first name input element, we have entered this value and that value has been assigned to this first name property. And inside this last name input element, we have entered this value and that value has been assigned to this last name property. Okay, so these properties are nothing but the name for these form controls and the value assigned to these properties are the value which we have entered in that form control. Now, it is also possible to group some of these form controls together. For example, let's say we want to group this first name, last name and email controls into a single group. Let's see how to do that. Let's go to VS Code and the first thing which I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to remove this disable attribute. Okay. Now this has nothing to do with form group. I simply don't want to disable this submit button. Now what we want is we want to group this first name, this last name and this email form controls together. So for that, the first thing which we need to do is we need to create a container. So for the container, I'm going to use a div. And inside this div, let's go ahead and let's cut this first name, last name and email control. And let's paste it inside this container div. And to group these form controls together, on this container div, we need to add an Angular directive called ng-model-group. And to this ng-model-group, we can specify a name. A name of our choice so let's call it maybe personal details okay with this if I save the changes if I go to the web page let's clear everything from the console here and now when I click on this submit button and if I expand this ng form let's expand this value object here you will notice that now we have this country, gender and hobbies property, but we do not have this first name, last name and email property. Instead of that, we have this personal details property. And this personal details is nothing but the name which we have specified for this ng model group. Okay. And if you notice, this personal details is an object and this object has this email, first name and last name property. So this personal details object has properties with the form control names which we have grouped together. Also, let's expand this controls object. So this controls object also has this country, gender and hobbies property and it also has this personal details property. And this personal details property is of type form group. Okay. So in this way, we can group some of the form controls together using ng model group. Now you might ask, what is the advantage of grouping form controls together? So without grouping, we will have to add validation on each of these form controls. But if we group some of the form controls, in that case, we can validate them together. Let's see that in action. So if I expand this person details object, you will notice that this person details object also has this valid property which is currently set to false 
it has this untouched property which is currently set to true it also has this invalid property which is set to true because currently this form group is invalid that's because these three fields are required field and since we have not specified any value for these fields that's why this form group is invalid and in the last lecture we learned that angular adds some css classes on each of the form controls in the same way it also adds some css classes on the form group as well let's see that let's go to this elements tab let's expand this div let's expand this form and inside this form we have this div with this ng model group now if you notice on this div also angular has added these classes ng untouched ng pristine and ng invalid now if i go ahead and if i touch this form you will notice that ng untouched has been removed and ng touched has been added and if i go ahead and if i enter some value in these fields you will notice that ng dirty has been added on this div and ng pristine has been removed and this div still has this ng invalid that's because here we have only entered value for first name and last name now if i enter value for this email as well now this ng invalid will be removed and ng valid has been added so angular also add these css classes on the container element inside which we are grouping the form controls okay so let's see how we can validate a form group together for that let's go to vs code and here first what i will do is i will comment these divs so inside these divs we are displaying some custom validation error messages now since we are going to display the custom validation error message for the group that's why i am commenting these custom validation error messages let's also comment this div and here before this closing container div let's add a new div and inside this div let's add this small element and here let's provide a custom validation error message so let's say some of the required fields does not have valid value now currently this error message will be displayed always so if i go to the web page if i refresh the page you will see that this validation error message is being displayed here and this error message will be displayed even if this form is valid so we only want to display this custom validation error message if the form is invalid if this form group is invalid okay so for that what we can do is on this container div let's create a local reference variable and let's call it maybe personal detail and to this personal detail let's assign ng model group now what this will do is if i go to the web page so here i have misspelled this name it should be ng model group so this g should be caps let's save the changes again let's go to the web page so if i go to the console if i submit this form here if i expand this controls object so here we have this personal details object so what this ng model group will do is it will assign this personal details object to this personal details variable and this personal details object has this invalid property so when this invalid property is true then only we want to display this custom validation error message okay so on this small element let's use ng if directive and here let's specify a expression so we are getting that personal details object in, inside this personal details variable so let's copy this variable and this variable is going to have an invalid property so when this form group is invalid then only we want to display this validation error message with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's refresh the page so currently this error message is being displayed because this group is invalid so inside this personal details group we have these three fields and these three fields are required fields so let's go ahead and let's enter some value inside these fields 
And now, since we have specified the proper values for each of these fields in this form group, now that validation error message is gone because now this form group is valid. But if I remove this value from here, so since this email field is required and here we have not specified any value, now this form group is invalid. And when this form group is invalid, this custom validation error message is being displayed here. Okay, so in this way we can do a form group validation and in this way we do not have to add validation on each of these form controls. We can do the form validation on the group level. Alright, also initially when this page loads, this form loads, that time also this custom validation error message is being displayed here. But initially I don't want to display this validation error message. I only want to display this validation error message if the form group is not valid and if the form group is touched. Okay, so let's go to our VS code and here let's add one more condition. So here let's use this end operator and here let's say if this form group is touched and if it is invalid then only we want to display that custom validation error message. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So now you will see that initially now that custom validation error message is not being displayed but if we touch this form group so if i click inside this text box and now if i click outside then this custom validation error message is being displayed here okay so the form group is a collection of form controls and it tracks the value and validity state of group of form control instances and we create form group to organize and manage the related elements and the advantage of using a form group is that we can validate a particular form group separately. And to group some of the form controls together, we use ng model group directive. And to this, we specify a name. Okay. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.